Chapter 950, Dreamin' Don't Give It Up Soldiers! Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Pod Cast. This time Expedient Edition. I am the best guy ever, and this is Hypocrite. We're getting right into the chapter. I really want to make this a habit that like as soon as it comes out, we record. That would be just fantastic. And I know I've been responsible for a lot of that. But you know what? We don't owe you people fucking shit. So fuck you. You're lucky to get anything. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's go to the thing shonen jump cover oh by the way so last week one piece on the cover as it always is uh unbelievably popular and um uh uh uh, uh, uh looks like is this related to the movie you think because i see oh is there Uchi a new movie and sabo Th- there is a new movie i oh i forget the name let me see new one piece movie it's like uh, stampede i think yeah one piece stampede and i think these people are all relevant yeah, yeah. I don't know anything about it. I haven't looked into it. And frankly, I don't really care. I could barely stomach the energy to even, like, look into the last one about Gold Man on Gold Island or whatever. Because the movies are not really canon, and who cares? Nothing yeah. that happens in them is consequential. So, you know, whatever. We've talked about it many times. Uh, Speaking... Good luck fighting everybody, yes. but I don't care. <laughs> Speaking of uh, canon, though... Uh... Mm. We get the second part of the cover story with Beji. And, Indeed. Uh, uh, the Beji family. And mm-hmm. uh, just sort of confirming what we assumed before, that it is uh, the what's-her-face chiffon looking, and they're going to find Lola. So that's what she wants. Yeah, what a great what a great idea. I hadn't even thought about that. We haven't seen Lola since the end of Thriller Bark. Oh, my God. And by the way, There's long been, I mean, I know that I've brought this up many times before, or several times, but there was like, at the very end of Thriller Bark, there was that one little moment where it looked like there was mysterious something peering out of the Florian Triangle. There was like some sparkles, which was never addressed. We know the rolling pirates are alive, because I think we've seen them in in like cover arcs and like individual pages before. I'm 90% sure of that. Oh shit, they might not even be in Thriller Bark anymore. In fact, probably not. Uh, shit, I was hoping this might be a chance for them to go back and, like, show us what that's about. But that's probably mm, not yeah, going to be they, the case. Yeah, they got their shadows back. I mm-hmm. I assume they just left. Yeah, well, I mean, why would they still be there? There's, there's no reason to, to just hang out there. Eh, but, whatever. Yeah. We'll see. If she turns up, that would be pretty interesting. Like, huh. Lola Lola's cool. will be back in the mm-hmm. story in some way. That'd be nice. And I, I'd like to see her and her sister together. Literally the same character. Sounds good. Sounds good. But, I yeah, I mean, Capone looks a little bit like, oh, boy. Oh, here we go. I don't know if I'm down for this adventure. Um, but uh, I'm sure they'll do it. And that, that sounds fun. I want to see it. I want to see it. Cool guys. And as I just want to reflect, now is an excellent time for us to reflect that uh, when I, I first got caught up reading One Piece um, during Thriller Bark, all those years and years and centuries ago, and... Um, it was in that time where Lola gave uh, the Bieber card to Luffy. It's like, hey, go meet my mom. She's a big pirate. As soon as that happened, I instantly knew that her mother was Big Mom. And I just want to say, how smart am I? I was so good <laughs> to have guessed that. And congratulations to me. <laughs> that's uh, uh, that's at, my at that only point, point. Had we any idea what Big Mom looked like? Uh, when the first time we heard about the Yonko was after Eni's lobby, and there's one panel um, in the manga, a little bit more in the anime or whatever, animated, you know, uh, where Garp is describing the existence of the Yonko, and that's when, I believe that's when the term New World is first used, at least in a clear, like, you're about to enter the New World, uh, past, the, past the red line or whatever. And uh, during that, when he's describing the Yonko, um, we see, like, we see a couple of faces and one chubby-ish kind of female-looking face. Um, we could kind of have assumed that was Big Mom. Now, Kaido doesn't look anything like the face that was, like, the Kaido yeah, face shown there. that... Uh, I'm trying to find a comparison of that. He looked like a weird, like, Turkish man with a little Fez hat on, which is not what Kaido looked like. But, I mean, way back in the day, when we first heard about the Shichibukai described by uh, John and Yosaku... They, were, they just look like seven swordsmen, like, standing in a circle. And now we know they're a bunch of 
you know, freaks and geeks of all shapes and sizes. You got Kuma, fucking Gecko Moria, Big Fat Boy, uh, Doflamingo, etc., etc. Hancock. So that was cool. That was cool. But anyway, let's get into the chapter. It's time for 950. 50 chapters away from chapter 1000. Won't that be a crazy day? That's uh, just the one soldiers whole year team. away. Oh, yeah, pretty much, pretty much. One year from today, July of next year. Check your calendars, people. Maybe August. We'll see. Uh, chapter 950. The soul. Actually, you know what? Oda does take more breaks these days, so it might be a little bit longer. Nonetheless, soon. Chapter 1000. The Soldier's Dream. Let's get into it. Yeah, so uh, we, we, we come back to Kid, um, mm -hmm. and he's uh, looking back a little bit in the past. Luffy mm -hmm. was, was there saying, hey, like... Bleeding out on the ground, disease-ridden. Hey, want to team up? <laughs> He's like, uh, no, fucking idiot. He ma he makes a big like Transformers <laughs> arm uh, with the, with all those Transformers sound effects. That's what I imagine. Indeed, indeed. And he uh, smashes zin, zin. out the 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 door. So he's just going. He's just gone. I love, this is a great, like, uh, getting his power back, like, being a badass moment. And you know what? Uh, we, first of all, we thought we were going to just, like, cut away from Luffy and the gang and do other things. Nope. This whole chapter focuses on uh, Luffy and the gang in jail. So that's kind of surprising, but very cool. Like it. And now Kid is just, he's like, I, I really like that first thing of, like, him just walking towards the gate and, like, from way far behind him, you know, his, his magnetism powers activate and, like, all these machines come together. Oh, I bet it'll look really cool and satisfying in the anime when it's animated. Um, oh, what a, what a cool guy. What a badass. Yeah. And, uh, you, you, you know, do you, do you think this is accurate or am I crazy? Is he doing a thing where, like, he made his arm really big, he bashes through the gate, and then we see him with, like, a smaller arm. Oh, okay, okay, never mind. I was gonna say, did he, like, condense the metal so he's, no, like, a no, really no. dense arm? But I think he just, like, let go of the big pieces or something. Yeah, I think that's how it works. Oh, okay, okay. I, yeah, I, I, I think that. you can see, like, bits falling near him. Oh, actually, there's a panel yeah. where things just sort of fall off. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, n n now, I, now I see. But uh, he but, says uh, here, uh, I'm mm -hmm. done making alliances. I'll never trust anyone ever again. So like, Including Luffy. He's not even willing to join Luffy right now after, yeah. all, after all that. Like, he respects him enough that he saved him and his, and, mm -hmm. and, and kill her. And he's like, I'm not going to kill you, even though you're defenseless. And I would otherwise mm. do it. And I'm totally not being a Sundari right now. Uh, and uh, fuck you. And I hate you. But I'm going to let you live. So he leaves. Um, and presumably has a hatred for both Hawkins and Apu. It so, sure, sure seems to be implying that. They've so, both, uh, we know Hawkins is working with, um, you know, Kaido, and it seems that Apu is too, so, yep. Yeah, so mm. if Killer is going, uh, Kid is going to, um, to help in the final fight, he'll be difficult to control. I think he's going to be like, you know, the Luffy to Luffy's Luffy, if you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> Luffy is a wild Indeed. card, and it's hard to get him to cooperate with plans. And when Luffy has a plan, this guy is going to be hard to cooperate with that plan uh, mm -hmm. itself. He's going to be on his own. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen with him. I, de I definitely know he's going to be involved, but he may not be there to be with anybody. He may disrupt the plan that they have uh, accidentally. That's possible. I mean, he's, he's clear that the goal of Kid right now is to get their comrades back. And so I, I'm eager to see how that goes. But I, I still think that he could pretty easily fall into the the the, the trope role of like uh, like begrudging allies. And I, I guess I won't even use the word allies. But like at the end, it's like okay, I'm not allied with you, but we have the same goal: kill Kaido and like get revenge or whatever. So like I will just maybe he'll be on his own ship, but I'm, I'll come with you guys because this enhances my chances of destroying Kaido. Or, or any shit like that. So I, I definitely think he'll be involved, and I think it'll it'll work out in that capacity. But, you know, maybe not. Maybe I'll be surprised in how Oda manifests this. But, man, what what a badass. I thought this was a really strong, like, exit from the narrative, at least for now. Yeah. Um, even though he didn't really do anything, I was still very... And just the fact that he's not... He's not being one of these just, like, go along with what seems to be convenient. He's got such a strong personality. Which is why he was the fucking most wanted supernova back in the day. Because he would just would say, fuck you, I'm doing what I want. 
but you pussies can deal with it. Uh, I don't care that I'm killing everyone and causing collateral damage. I will destroy anyone who gets in my way. What a fucking badass. This guy better have Haoshoku Haki, because he, he deserves it even more than Luffy, in my humble opinion. Because Luffy's a pussy. Luffy <laughs> will just bend over and take shit when it's appropriate. Killer will fucking destroy your ass. Uh, so I, I hope to see that uh, in some capacity. But uh, it's just very, very strong. I still feel sad. I'm looking at Killer in the back, just like still laughing. It's like, oof, that's a that's a damaged boy over there. He's uh, poor, I mean, poor bastard. I definitely think if and when they get like the cure for the laughter. Yeah, um, which will happen, 100%. Uh, giving it to Killer will be like, okay, well, maybe I'll help you fight Kaido. That you help my bro. You mm. saved him. Mm. You saved him from this curse. And he's really thankful. Like, that could be a Perhaps. good turning point. Perhaps. Luffy didn't, Luffy didn't really do anything, like, specifically in this arc, like, to win over Kid in this way. And you can clearly see that Kid is super loyal to his comrades. And if they could either, like, help him save, the com save his comrades or, uh, like, heal, excuse me, heal Killer or something in some way, I feel like that's the way that you get Kid to, to play along and, like, be a team player in some capacity. So uh, I guess we'll just look out for more of that, because that's, that's it for him for now. Yeah. Um, so now, everybody in... The, they've taken Udon, and uh, all the prisoners who are left, uh, who are freed and, and not enslaved anymore, mm -hmm. they've just learned that Luffy is also a pirate, and they're going full, like, um, full Nami, full early Nami on, on him. Yeah, yeah. By, by saying, we can't trust pirates, Kaido's a pirate, fuck this guy. Hmm. Even though he saved all our lives and he did all this stuff. Uh, no, no, he's a peace main pirate. He's not a Morgiana pirate or whatever those old words. Remember the remember the initial versions of One Piece, everybody? Yeah, cool. Wait, what are okay, those? Go on. There were uh in in like there were a couple of versions of One Piece made before like the oh, real like chapter wanted? one. It, yeah, and Wanted. And I, I think there was actually I think there was a total of three or maybe four. And in one of them, Luffy, like, does a thing where he explicitly states, like, I, he, like, meets the Nami equivalent. She's like, you're a pirate? He's like, no, 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 you don't understand. There's technical terms here. There's Morgiana pirates that are, like, the Don Krieg rape and pillage. I, I think they're called Mor Morgiana. And there's Peace Main pirates. That's what I want to be, because they just go on adventures and have fun and are free. And that's yeah, the, it, there's a distinction between them. But, it, I uh, think it goes against it the whole idea of piracy to have, like, distinctions yeah. that you would explain to people they just do i mean it kind of makes sense in a it, way i mean th those <laughs> distinctions do exist but like they have they yeah. arise naturally rather than like a rule book that that's true like just by the virtue of a pirate's life leads to someone who you know might certainly be more willing to raping and pillaging because they just go from place to place and take what they want and leave so uh so yeah you could see why that would uh, have negative connotations pirates are not held bound held down by any code or creed other than the, the pirate code, so they could certainly be more dangerous than uh, civilized individuals. Uh, yeah, so we got we got uh, Otama and Momonosuke mm -hmm. and Chopper. Chopper's doing his Chopper's doctrine. He's doing his uh, he sure save, is. save Luffy from being dead. Uh, Luffy's juice. looking not so good right now. He's looking, he's looking real. He's skinny. looking a little bit like a like a snake. A little bit like <laughs> shedding a, its skin. Yeah. A little bit like a zomboy, and uh, mm -hmm. we were saying last time about Momonosuke not having enough of like uh, yes, a weight true. to his uh, character. In the you know saving Wano is just sort of like cool because kill Kaido, but right. the the people of Wano is like less easy to give a shit about because we haven't had a character yet indeed. that indeed you know fills the role of like the person who will be really affected by saving all the people. Uh, and just as I hoped, yeah. here's a little Momonosuke moment right now. Which we is have a Momonos just what I want. Mo -mo -mo -no -no Momonosuke moment. Momonosuke. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he's, you know, he's just starting off by yelling at Luffy, looking like an idiot. And then Luffy, in his uh, emaciated state, starts calling him a weakling. Like, oh, you're such a little pussy. You can't do all this. <laughs> you won't you even literally die for no reason. What a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you wouldn't kill yourself knowing that Chopper's there, or n maybe not even knowing that Chopper's there. Like, kill yourself for the good of your people? What a bitch. 
Well, I like that little moment, by the way, of, of you know, Chopper scolding Luffy, which is totally appropriate. He's like, think about the consequences. Luffy's like, I'm sorry, please save me. Please don't <laughs> let me die. Honestly, kind of sad, but uh, I'm sure he'll be fine, so I'm not that yeah. worried about it. I mean, once Very he, humble moment. <laughs> I, think, I think in the back of his mind, Luffy knows that, like, you know, he got a good doctor when he got Chopper. Um, yeah. And he can trust him. Like, he'll, he'll I mean, put he his relies life on his in his hands in a big way. Yeah. He, he trusts his... Right. Like, Nami is... Without her, they'd never get anywhere. Without Frankie, they wouldn't have a ship. Without Usopp, they'd... Uh, he wouldn't have a friend. <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> anyway, uh, mm -hmm. they're... Mm -hmm. They're sort of... They kick him out of the, the building they're in or whatever. I, I think Luffy is throwing boulders at him, I think is what's implied here. I think he's just, like, pissed at Momonosuke for being a pussy, so he throws a boulder at him. Because I, I don't know who else would throw that boulder in this you know, situation. Yeah, I guess that's I guess that's what it is. And then everybody <laughs> turns around, and they're like, oh, my God. It's, there he is. They kneel immediately. They start crying. Lord Momonosuke. Okay, they, they weren't even, they didn't even believe, necessarily, that the whole 20 years thing had actually happened. They're yeah. like, you might just look old, Raizo. You always looked old. So how do we know for sure that this is, like, a real teleportation from 20 years in the past thing and here comes little child momonosuke yeah. still a child this is the first time that momonosuke being a child has actually been helpful to the plot because if it wasn't like this they would not be so convinced that the time travel thing worked but there it is yeah they, they are see, in fact convinced they see the, the 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 young boy the young master the child of lord odin their best friend their best Indeed. bro that's a and that's a cool bowing thing yeah. going on there and this very, very nice this is this is uh momonosuke f like facing the fact that he has big shoes to fill and he is an mm. important person and people are Indeed. depending on him and i think in the coming chapters with momonosuke he's going to be more of like you know momonosuke being less of a stupid kid that you know gets to have a bath with nico robin uh, and smiles Lucky about fuck. it, and and more of like a character that is very integral to the the ver central uh, plot of this arc. That that's true, and I'm glad to see more of that. However, I still feel that um, like Vivi, by comparison, still she had a lot of personal characterization before she became just like our conduit to connect to Wano. This is an excellent moment to connect uh, uh, Momonosuke to like his people and like his responsibilities and he like you know his connection to his legacy and whatnot but I, I still do feel like i need i want more momonosuke like personality and more like personal stakes but uh i mean this is good this is definitely moving in the right direction so keep it coming yeah. oda good, good, good job good job uh, he starts to tell a story in fact of what happened that day in odin castle I don't know whether Indeed. we're going to see that. Uh, hopefully, we'll, we'll, we'll we will get a flashback eventually. I am sure, but I doubt right now. Th th those always happen during the big final battle. It'll probably yeah. happen right as Luffy's been beat down by Kaido, and Kaido's like, "You couldn't possibly get back up." And Momonosuke in the side will be like, "Oh no, it's all going so wrong." And then there will be a flashback that goes on for twenty chapters. Uh, <laughs> that's you know uh, Odin's history where we learned everything we one want for, to know. One for every year that they moved into the future. Exactly, and then that will end, and then it like the fight will continue in Luffy. That will be the moment where Luffy rises and finally overcomes, because that's always how these things go. So that'll be that's my guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Kawamatsu here says he needs. I'm needed elsewhere right now. I'm trying Ryan, to think Ryan. where he would be going. Does I he can't know, think of anything. Is it that he knows Hiyori and he's gonna go look for her? Uh, who's Hiyori again? I can't. Oh, right. Uh, uh, sister. Right. That, that's right. Um, maybe. I feel like this is. I don't know. Imply, maybe he's gonna go get the Kappa people to like join in the fight. Like everything that all our Red Scabbards and like our allies are doing right now is basically in the service of gathering more troops to be able to fight Kaido and take him down. So my guess is that it's related to that in some way. So that's why my, my guess was like, ah, he's going to get the rest of the Kappa people to join. I don't know if that's true, but th that would be my guess um, if I had to, you know, just throw something out there. Other than that, I don't know. Maybe you can attract it. Because, like, narratively, it would be lame of him to go look for Hiori because we already know that Zoro has Hiori and, like, it's yeah. nothing for us to worry about. But I, the character um, wouldn't know that, so, yeah. True, but also he mm -hmm. could... Like, Zoro needs to get his sword back in the wintry place, and if he meets right. up with Kawamatsu, that would be, like, a good samurai help for sword fighting. 
or something. Maybe Zoro could learn something from a samurai. Uh, yeah, because we do want Zoro to learn swordsmanship stuff. That's like kind of what we're here for, to see Zoro. Like like when he first saw Kinemon cut fire on Punk Hazard, he was like, ooh, the, the one of swordsmanship is very interesting. And I want to see more of that shit. So yeah, yeah, hopefully we get some of that. In fact, I bet I bet Zoro will learn a lot from Sword Stealer Man, a uh, Gilgamesh looking motherfucker, yeah. uh, what, whatever his name was. I think he's gonna learn things from that guy, but we'll, we'll see. He's got eight days right now to like train, and I think that something will be done in that in that time. All right, and then we switch on over to Azura Doji, mm -hmm. who went to you know to show uh, Inurashi and Kinemon this thing. It's like I got something to show you. And it Indeed. is a big old graveyard of all the samurai or soldiers. I'm not sure exactly what like class of soldier they are. Yeah, um, yeah. Obviously not the, the Red Scabbard level, but mm -hmm, important mm -hmm. people, I'm sure, who died, uh, who were impatient in waiting for 20 whole years to go and fight uh, Orochi on Onigashima. Finally, finally, we're talking about some real consequences, like the physical man cost of doing something that delays 20 years, where the people had no assurances it would really happen, and they're, you know, they just, the whole time, they're living under Orochi, this, like, evil usurper who killed their fucking lord. Ugh, yeah, it it's, is, it's is really good. interesting, the idea that they had to keep their loyalty for 20 years, and, like, not knowing why 20 whole years was necessary... Mm -hmm. Like they feel like, or having any assurance, it would even you know, even if that's what she said, would that even work out? Yeah. What if she like, had acts? You know, all kinds of things could have gone wrong. It, it, I'm I'm interested to to know whether there is a reason why it was twenty years. Like, did they know uh, they something so, would happen in that in that it, time? You want to know? You know, I know my theory because a little bit later they say they're like, no, we're sure that they made us wait twenty years. I was giving ahead like a couple of pages, but it doesn't matter. Um. I mean, do you know what? What's the thing that happened twenty years later? Uh, Luffy and the gang showed up. That's what happened twenty years from that date. I feel pretty darn confident that it's going to be Luffy's involvement and you know the rest of his crew. That was the thing that like this prophesized lady, like was aware of and knew that like well, that's yeah. that would I be. Mean, I assume that was it. I was just wondering, like, do they know the future? Is was there a prophecy that? Like someone actually could tell that they need. I mean, to go Toki had a much. time devil fruit, right? So all all we know that she could do right now was that she could, you know, send things to the future. My guess is that she had some like clairvoyance or whatever it is to like see. You know, into the yeah, future. that makes a lot of sense. Like if you've got a devil fruit that can send things mm -hmm. to the future, you probably see into the future as well. That's a good ass devil fruit. God damn. Um, Too bad but you yeah. can't send yourself because she would have gone. I think. And she would have been in the future. Are you sure she couldn't send herself? I remember her dying. I don't remember if she said she couldn't send you know, herself. You know, I, well, I guess we don't know. But um, if she didn't go, I guess it mm -hmm. would have been for a very good reason. To protect yeah. Hiori or something. I mean, if I remember correctly, I forget how much of this was confirmed. But there, there's, like, rumors that uh, Lady Toki was, like, really, really old. So I, I think... I, oh, yeah, now it's all coming back to me. I think that we had theories at the time that, like, she might have been all the way back from like when the Poneglyphs were created in Wano, and then she like time hopped through the future, and then she decided like, this is where I want my final resting place uh, yes, to be, like yeah. here with my husband, and I, I, I think that's it, and I'll, I'll have to go back and like double check to make sure that's correct, but that's that's my recollection. Um, so yeah, this is pretty, pretty sad. And finally, finally, Asura Doji is opening up about why he's being such a grumpy Gus, and it's because all his fucking friends Threw them 10 years ago. So it's been even 10 years since this fucking happened. They all just decided, fuck it. We, like, we don't even know if the prophecy's real. It's been 10 years. We're just going to try to kill Kaido. And if we and, die, yeah, holding our swords. Yeah, during this whole time, like, the crops have been burned, and Kaido's army's been going around and ravaging the land, and there's dying yep. and stuff. But no, you got to like, wait, bro. Just you wait. wait. It's like, there's no reason to wait. We're going to die anyway. Let's go. That's, I feel for him, man. I'd probably be one of them. Who'd wait 20 years for anything? Not me. <laughs> Not me. Oh, I'll by the way. I'll just kill myself instead. <laughs> uh, they have this chant, this yell that they say. Ah, uh, yes. Which is Sunachi. Mm -hmm. uh, Sunachi. But uh, there's a little note here. It says, this mm -hmm. was previously translated as Snatch. That's when uh, Momonosuke was yelling Snatch. 
and Indeed. he said Indeed. he learned it from Zoro, and uh, it apparently came from these people as well. And it means, uh, it's not just snatch as in I'll grab, but uh, throw away the name and throw away the wits. All we need it's to do is very... empty our brains and charge in mindlessly. I, it's I, a... Yeah. Yeah, go on, go on. No, it's just sort of weird um, and cool, but I don't really it, know what it, it means cool. yet. It is cool. Yeah, I, I definitely think, I think that this is going to be, you know, there's always, like, a big emotional, like, climax of every arc, like, Luffy ringing the bell, or when he, like, blasted, uh, you know, Crocodile out from the, the crypts or whatever. I feel that, like, this is going to be, like, the the thing that's somehow hooked into, like, the big emotional climax. And so, I mean, what they're actually saying is, throw away the name, throw away the wits, and they're they're comparing it to when they were kids doing tests of courage, like, jumping off of cliffs into the ocean or whatnot. Uh, they're saying, like, just don't think. Just do shit and, like, forget even using your thought process. Just do shit and accept whatever consequences come of it. You know, just the other day, I was listening to a guy talk about... I think he was a Navy SEAL. He was talking about how he was a big fan of the, the Code of Bushido. And he liked to think about it when he was, like, doing military campaigns or whatever. And, like, one of the things that they did was that the samurai, part of Bushido, was when you go into battle, they would consider themselves already dead. And that by, by thinking of themselves in that way, it made them, like, able to do things, like, like the kamikaze fighters in World War II and stuff. They were already dead, so sacrificing their life was, like, totally a normal thing to do. And, you know, if it was towards the end of, like, defeating the enemy, uh, they would absolutely do it. So, it would, like, one would embolden you, and then two, it would probably just, like, make you more of a badass... If you're just not afraid to, you know, lose your fucking arm, get your fucking dick chopped off, or just die, uh, pretty pretty cool. So I, I, I the, this strikes me as somewhat similar to that. They're just like, don't think, just act. And I, I obviously yeah. am not a big advocate <laughs> of doing that in life. I mean, normal but, like no, modern sensibilities would say, ah, oh, that's stupid. You you gotta yeah. have a risk assessment of. Some I, I admire it gotta, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but in, in the olden ta di times, it would be pretty cool. Although, in this instance, mm -hmm. it is uh, being yelled by a bunch of people who are going to their deaths because they're impatient, which is implied yeah. to be a bad idea. I impatient, but also, like, you could call them, like, that they're just, like, lacking faith. Because if they knew for 100% certainty that in 20 years, like, they'd be able to fight, I feel like... I, I really feel a sympathy for these people. I feel like... Because I think I would have been one of them. If not, like, have lost my patience way, way before this. Who's just gonna believe just some word that in 20 years, uh, that'll be your chance? One, even if I believe that, would I even have the patience to wait that long? And two, why would I believe that? Based on whose testimony? Like, a rumor about what Lady Toki said, like, as she was dying, as, like, your lord and everything you knew was being destroyed? I don't, uh, it's, uh, it's... That's a big one. That's a tough one. And, like, Ashura Doji is, like, for the first time we see him with actual emotion, crying as all his buddies are just going to go let themselves get fucking killed by Kaido. This is actually a pretty pretty good moment at making Kaido's forces feel intimidating because um, they just all fucking died. And we, we don't know what kind of personnel cost Kaido's boys faced or, like, they, they suffered as a, as a consequence. But, uh, oof, that's, uh, that's rough. That's rough, buddy. It's really interesting to think, like, this Yonko, Kaido, has just, mm -hmm. for, like, years and years, or 20 years, I guess, yeah. just yeah. completely taken over this country and, like, forced its people into complete servitude, and he's, like, undefeatable. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just sort of, like, a little different feeling than, like, Whole Cake. Uh, where it's, yeah. you know, you could imagine she just built up a, a, a pirate crew over time, and then she had islands that ba made things for her, probably to, to sate her uh, bloodlust or, like, a Absolutely, lust. absolutely. Um, I, I just love the world of Totland so much. It was yeah. so thoughtfully constructed. Like, at the top, you have this incredibly powerful godlike warlord who will protect you from any invasions and outside forces but at the same time they themselves are like an absolute monstrous force of destruction that will just kill you if you get in the way uh, or yeah. don't satisfy her needs so you like and the business of all of Totland has to be satisfying Big Mom's hunger what a f oh just yeah, so it, good it makes so her good. so like threatening and for this as well like Wano is home to like some of the strongest 
people on the planet. Like, mm -hmm. so many people are incredibly strong samurai. Indeed. And yet, they're all, like, completely under this one pirate crew's thumb. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty fucking, it's pretty fucking cool. We, we saw Ashura Doji himself, this fucking guy, just jobbed Jack that one time. So, and that's one of his three strongest boys. Pretty, in, pretty intimidating guy. But, um, I, you know, on the, on the subject of this, just, just one thing occurs to me. I don't think we've seen a single island that has, like, sworn allegiance to Kaido so far. Whereas we've seen many that have sworn to Big Mom, a bunch sworn to Blackbeard. You know, Whitebeard, obviously, his legacy was a big deal. Even Shanks, we saw in one um, fucking thing. Oh, wait, no, there was that one time where, what was his name? Like, that cyborg guy that uh, he had an island that Drake came to. And oh, yeah. That's where I mean, so, okay, to, th that was one thing. It's just that, like, Kaido, Totland feels more impressive as, like, a territory than Wano does. It, it, it kind of strikes me as weird that, like, uh, Kaido would focus so much energy on, like, maintaining control over specifically one country of Wano. Like, why? what's so important about Wano that he devotes so much time and energy to it? 20 years in one place is a... Uh, maybe he just decided this is his home base, and maybe that's all there is to it. So he goes out, he does pirate things, then he comes back, and he chills in Onigashima. And he's got, like, alliances with, uh, you I know, mean, the, the yeah, Shogun and whatnot. I feel like if, the, if Kaido is, like, kind of a lax individual, mm -hmm. he's not, like, a big planner, yeah. then it would make sense that he's, like, working with Orochi to, to keep this... You know, it's good for him that he's getting this... this you know, he has power, he has influence, he has money... Mm -hmm. Enough to fund devil fruit technology that will get him smiles yeah. and stuff and all this all this other stuff. He needs to be uh, well integrated into the, the dark web or whatever it is. The, the, uh, the underground. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't see him as like a mischievous, conniving sort of person. So I just think maybe he's, yeah, he's a here. Warlord. He's mm -hmm. here just because like he can let Orochi do all the, the talking and he's just sort of like drinking a lot. Yeah, I guess you're right. It's probably a pretty comfortable arrangement for him, where he can just allocate work to the samurai. Yeah, because it kind of made me wonder, like, why why doesn't he just like conquer other places? And like, like right now he's kind of sharing territory with Orochi. Yeah, uh, like why seems, not just go subjugate like whoever it seems the fuck like you want? Uh, the, the opposite of what you would imagine for someone who's based yeah. off of Genghis Khan. Yeah, exactly. That's 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 a good way of putting it. Although Genghis Khan was known, I believe, for he would... Con Actually, I was just watching the Marco Polo, um, uh, like, Netflix show, which is about his Genghis Khan's uh, grandson, Kublai Khan, but same idea. They would, like, conquer places, but they would leave the people there, like, in charge, but just subjugated to, you know, Genghis or, or Kublai Khan or whatever. And uh, I, maybe that's kind of what's going on here. Like, I think Orochi is probably... would. It's just that, like... It is home base. You would think that Kaido would be, like, dominant. Like, if Kublai Khan or, or Genghis Khan was in Mongolia, like, where, where they're from, they're like, okay, they are number one. These are my people. But Kaido came to, like, a different land. He's not really personally in charge. He's just kind of, like, the enforcer who has his own island off the shore. So, yeah, I just, yeah. I just kind of pointed to the same difference, uh, distinction that, that you were talking about. So it's like... Meh. It, it is a bit weird that he's not like going out and conquering other places. I mean, we don't know. I'm sure what there's places many he islands has, out there, but like he's, he's definitely yeah. staying here for most of the mm -hmm. time. Um, I guess maybe he's just lazy. It, it could <laughs> just be that, and which would be a very funny thing. But I don't know whether it would be good for his intimidation. Like if Exa he's, if he, yeah, he doesn't. It thing. doesn't seem like, from what we know at least, it mm -hmm. doesn't seem like he he cares that much about becoming the pirate king. I I agree. I agree. Although you know what. I, I think, because, like, his, he was first defined by just, like, by, like, being unsatisfied with life. And that's why, you know, the first thing we ever see of him is him committing suicide. Incredible introduction. Super cool. Um, but, but like, it does set him as, like, kind of a, I don't know, a, a whimsical kind of guy. Like, not, like, a dedicated, hardcore conqueror. I mean... Kind of like, like, mm. Big Mom kind of is more of that and is more intimidating. Do you think um, it could possibly yeah. be that he wants to go out conquering, but because mm -hmm. of all the things he needs to maintain such a large empire, he mm -hmm. can't really just go around willy-nilly? And it's oh, so annoying, all this bureaucracy mm. and red tape, and that he's had he's forced to build around himself in order to keep everything running smoothly. 
Yeah. Uh, that it's just sort of like, ah, oh, geez. Well, I just want to commit suicide. I don't want to do my taxes. God damn Pro- it. Probably true. Pro- probably true. And, you know, it, 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 in my mind, it makes me think of someone compared to Luffy. Because, like, as Luffy's, you know, pirating career has gone on, he's almost considered one of the Yonko. They say, I don't, he's not that level yet, but he, whatever, he's getting up there. And, um, like, Luffy, Luffy doesn't want a fleet, and he barely wants allies. Like, he was happy to ally with, like, Law's crew, but that's, like, one pirate crew of, I don't know, maybe, like, 50, maybe 100 people. That's, like, way different than, like, having several fleets that he has to personally oversee the way that, like, those lads on Dressrosa tried to swear to him. But they just, like, they did it anyway, despite him not wanting it. And they, like, made themselves part of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. Where Luffy, Luffy feels no, like, obligation to them. He feels no responsibility to, like, take care of them. And that's probably exactly the sort of thing that Kaido would want, too. He doesn't want to have to worry. He probably wants that freedom. But by getting wrapped up in this bureaucracy and whatnot to obtain... You know, maybe his, like, smiles and the perfect career he wants. I think that Kaido probably has been saddled with more bureaucracy than he's comfortable having, but now he can't, can't like, figure a way out of it. it. I don't know. If this story was, like, realistic, that's, that's what I would think that maybe he's thinking. But I, I do think that at some point in this arc, I mean, we have to, we'll get, like, a big Kaido, like, flashback and learn about his history and maybe about, like, the rocks or that, that crew or whatever. Um... Yeah, I don't know. So when we when we get there, I'll be very interested to see his motivations and what changed as he as he grew up and developed yeah. as a pirate. I don't know. We'll see. I I think there's a lot more we have to learn about Kaido. So we'll get there. We'll get there. So, uh, uh, Shura Doji, he's he's like, well, now you've seen the graves, but I can't doubt Lord Odin. If you think mm. that there is a plan here, well, let's just. It's been 20 years. We may as well do it now. We're going to do the thing on the night of the Fire Festival. Mm-hmm. We're going to exact our revenge, and we're going to do it, and I'm on your team now. Yeah. Nothing it's all cool. Re- it's, it's a little funny. Nothing really changed. Yeah. It's, nothing... He's just like, why did it require 20? They're like, bro, we don't know either, but I'm sure there's a well, reason for it. He's like, okay. I don't think it was that that changed anything. I think it was earlier when they were watching the TV when their mentor mm. died. Um, mm, and yeah. then he says, "Guys, come, come to see this." And he, he this is part of that whole s- same thing. Like yeah. he was already con- considering joining, and then he just wanted to show them what twenty years has cost everybody. Yeah, yeah. I think he just needed to kind of work out his emotional issues to get to the place where he's like ready to to join up and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, because I mean, this guy was a loyal retainer of of Odin, so he wants to fight him, fight for him, and get revenge and whatnot, so fair enough, fair enough. And then he's just like, hey, lads, you coming with me? And everyone's like, yeah, hell yeah, bro. It's time to do it. It's been 20 years. They killed Yasuye. We're going to get fucking revenge. Oh, how nice. There we go. And then he smiles. He does a big, funny, fat guy smile, and he, and he hugs uh, Inurashi, and he's like, haha, uh-huh. we're older and stronger. <laughs> yeah, he's saying that... It, uh, I wonder if that's true. He's like, we've had 20 years to become stronger while you stay the same, Kinemon. Uh, maybe that might be true. People live a long time in One Piece, so he's not old yet. Oh, but it's no, no, no. as funny as Kinemon calls him geezers. Lol, how mean, how cruel. <laughs> then uh, swoops in right over to yep uh, in Hakumai. I don't know if we've been in Hakumai yet. I forget what's in Hakumai, dude. I don't know these fucking regions. Well, and it shit. looks like a forest, but like um, true. In fact, it looks like a autumn forest, like a like a brown leaves on the ground. Those are sort Japanese of thing. maples, I I think. Is there is there like a, a a weather system going on? Like Ringo is the snow, the winter place. Hakumai could be the, um, the fall. <laughs> well, I, a very Spring, I'd summer, say it's very maybe. unlikely. We we know that uh, you know on the Grand Line, this hasn't been a thing for a, a decent while now. But we know that there every island has like a different season or whatever. Um, I doubt that, like, the island itself is divided amongst different seasons. I think Ringo, if I had to guess, I'd say it's more a correlate of, like, the actual, I think they're called prefectures in, or the regions or whatever. My guess is that Ringo is, is Hokkaido, which is the really northern island of Japan. It's just kind of supposed to be that. But, I don't know, I could be wrong. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. It was snowy. Maybe they're just up on a mountain top or something? Mm, maybe. I don't know. I, don't know. I mean, I just, I just note that there are leaves... On the ground, there are leaves mm. in the air, presumably falling, and it just seems like if feels like if, autumn if, here. 
Yeah, if there were to be like a seasonal like difference in various places. And, and then... you know, the flower capital is covered in sakura, so that would be that's like a spring thing. So spring, fall, winter, we've got three of them covered. One of the others yeah. is probably summer. Eh. Eh. I I kind of feel like Oda's almost a little bit forgotten or just doesn't really care about the whole seasonal island thing that much anymore and now he's just kind of just kind of winging it it could just be like a specific japanese sort of tree that has this shape of leaf why very is why it's drawn very, uh, very prominently yeah i feel like the emphasis is less on that on the seasonal thing and more just on like i want to depict like all the things that japan is famous for like cool you know japanese maples sakura you know cool snowy hats and uh, towns and stone places. I think that's what he's going for more than anything. You know, he's just jacking off, drawing all this Japanese shit that he's been waiting to do <laughs> for a million years in One Piece. So ha have a good time, Oda. Enjoy that. So yeah, Zoro is here and he's slicing up Naruto's left and right. Indeed. <laughs> uh, Idiots. <laughs> killing them all. Uh, I, I guess we've got the, the, you know, the final nail in the coffin on that. Mm -hmm. uh, pirates versus ninjas. Obviously, pirates win. Pirates cause... win. Or does he come as a samurai? No, he's a pirate. Okay. Samurai, I mean, pirates win, yeah. <laughs> True. Uh, Sorry, Naruto. Yeah, he's, he's just sort of, like, walking around, fighting off ninjas and protecting Hiyori, uh, and he's going to get over to the, the, the guy who stole his sword. Yes. And also, he wants to avenge Tonoyasu and make sure Hiyori gets back to her brother so he's like he's being a hero right now he's being like a protagonist or something this is a very sexy situation right now a, 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 the, literally the hottest girl on the island versus everyone's favorite boy uh, Zoro super sexual man big muscles big sword big hair big scar big dick and look look at her sitting there just kneeling next to him this, and, like, they're on the run. They're being chased. He's defeating all the people who are trying to kill her. I'm just saying, this is literally the kind of situation where you fuck. This is what happens. Although in Japan, they're, uh... Maybe she's very protective of her... Wait, I was gonna say virginity. I forgot. She's a literal prostitute. It's time to fuck, Hiyori. It's time to fuck. You owe this man sex. <laughs> this is my, uh... This you is my know, official position right. on the matter. What if... Officially, I'm just she saying she could. She doesn't have to, but she could, and be real easy and a great time. I mean, but like, yeah, what if like, obviously, sex will not be depicted in One no. Piece. It may not even be <laughs> uh, like mentioned. But, Probably uh, not. I mean, there's implications of sex because Beji had a boy. He had a, the implications he had a child. are very uh, even. There's been not very much romantically between Hiori and Zoro, but like, we all feel that like this is what would happen if it like it was kind of romantic series yeah. it just seems like if, you know. if it was if it was a story about Zoro then this would be the love interest that he's protecting which yeah. would yeah. reward him with a BJ hero there you know <laughs> you know it dog you know it uh and yeah like if if they they become like canon couple mm -hmm. that would make Zoro technically in the royal family of Wano which I, I, a weeb's dream <laughs> uh, yeah I mean like he is the sword boy Yep. I kind of think I, f I kind of feel like that's uh, pretty fitting. Like overall, like th in the entire One Piece story. Considered. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I I, I yeah. don't. I, I think that the most we'll get. I've just my prediction is that we will get something akin to. I, I don't even know that they'll necessarily go this way. If they go any kind of romantic route between Zoro and Hiori, like more hardcore, which is possible. I think the most we'll get is like basically kind of the same way that like Usopp left Kaya. At the end of, you know, when he... Yeah, or, or the way... Like that. Or even pudding, or kind like, of. Yeah, I mean, if we're thinking about, like, uh, mm -hmm. endgame ships, yeah. right? This is a good one. I, Luffy I like it. has Hancock. That's pretty much guaranteed. It's going to be, That's like... That's pretty good, yeah. There's also... People ship Nami and him. I mean, I don't know, man. Well, well the thing is... Um, I mean, why would he have gone into that if it, it didn't, it wouldn't, it, like, it, it's a perfect, like, chi-chi moment. Like, you couldn't have Goku mm -hmm. with Bulma, because it's just sort of weird. Um, I, I hear ya. There um, are more romantic moments. Like, the everyone cites the, the march on Arlong Park, where Luffy, Luffy never gives his hat to anyone, but he gave it to Nami. Oh my god, that means he actually loves her. No, you idiots. It, it obviously doesn't imply he, that. 
it, he, necessarily. It's because he actually, like, you know. He respects her and cares about her. and He, you know, he really cares about her as one yeah. of his crew. Indeed. And a friend obviously. And, and all that. Like, Luffy is not a romantic person. Bo no, Hancock not at all. is, therefore, she'll force it on him and he'll be like, oh, I'm married, bef you know, before he knew it. Like, that's what's going to happen with him. Uh, Possibly. Sanji and Pudding potentially going to get that's together. A, that's a good one. That's a strong that's a, that's, one right that's there. That's a pretty good shoe in Yeah. Um, Zoro doesn't have anyone yet, but he already looks like well, a good I, We're forgetting Tashigi, dude. What about Tashigi? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Threesome. Get a couple of yeah, wives. You know, geisha. Ooh, ooh well, like in Memoirs of a Geisha, where you have your normal, like, honorable wife, and then you have your <laughs> knight, uh, what is it? You have your knight geisha wife. That could be Komurasaki, a.k.a. Hiyori, even though she's the princess, so that'd be a little awkward. <laughs> yeah, you know, completely forgot about Tashigi. Oof. I feel like her, her, um, you know, the thing with her and Zoro is sort mm -hmm. of, it's been going on for so long that it sort of feels like the time Nothing's for happening. it to be... Yeah, the time for it to have progressed in any meaningful way is long since passed. Like, if you it know happens... What? I know what you mean, uh, I, and like... I kind of feel you on that. It's just that I think that if One Piece just... If you magically snapped your fingers and One Piece just ended at around, like, the 300 or 400 chapter mark, as, you know, most series end well before that, if that had happened, I feel like the Tashigi thing would have felt much more natural for, like, whatever the conclusion of that's going to be then, like, it would have made sense. It's just that One Piece is so long, and there's just not enough space to keep doing, like, new things with, like, Zoro and Tashigi all the time. I, I feel like, like, that's the real reason why the Tashigi thing feels stalled out, whereas, you know, it's just... To the characters, yeah. it doesn't really matter. It's been... It's actually been much less time, canonically, in One Piece for all the characters, as opposed to us, who have been reading it. <laughs> Which is uh, shocking, but true. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm going through them all. So, like, uh, yeah. Chopper has got... Uh, oh, Deer, Deer Mink. Deer Mink. De What's her Deer face? Deer Mink. Yeah, that's canon. Uh, that's confirmed. Uh, Frankie? Uh, I guess... Robin? I guess he'll... No. They are the mom and dad of the Straw Hats. I... All right. The thing with... No, no, because you know Robin is, like, all about that Jimbei. She's all about oh, that Oh, don't, no, gross, don't say that. She's all about that gentleman, that, Stop. that, that dashing man. Ugh. She has literally grabbed Frankie's balls one time. That's as much sex as we've ever seen in One Piece. Except for that time that Luffy got a hand job for all the, uh, all the <laughs> Amazons. Epic. <laughs> that was epic. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Usopp has Kaya. Kaya, Kaya uh, of course. Brooke has Laboon. Yeah, yeah uh, he's, he's whale sexual. <laughs> whale, whale, he's having a whale of a time over there. Brooke's um, a slutty guy, but uh, he, he, he doesn't have a something. penis anymore, so, like, what's he gonna do? He'll work it out. He'll work it out. He'll maybe, leave you the maybe, bone. He, maybe he can, like, create a phantom penis. Like, Sans the, create... se uh, the skeleton. If he's done, if he, he has done the eye bulge with, like, mysterious black darkness in his eyes, if he can do that, I think he can fuck. That's my position. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> you know, interesting. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who else? Uh, who, who would Nami have, though? Is there a hot guy for Nami? No, the no. There's nobody except the, the Luffy thing that people bring up. I mean, maybe Sanji, you know, because like there's a Sanji thing going on there. A little bit. People like, bring it up. I sometimes. don't know. I don't know why I feel like this, but I feel like marrying within the crew is sort of like marrying a band member. It just feels like you should. Yeah. It would be cooler and less uh, confrontational, if, like, narratively that is. If well, you know, they, I, they all had a, a soulmate that is outside of the crew that they would marry and settle down with later after the end of the. the manga. I, I Yeah, I was just going to say I think that One Piece will end with the Straw Hats not like saying they hate each other, ah, we're breaking up, but breaking up in the sense that like, like with the Gold Rogers crew, they finish their mission and like, they're all going to go do their own things in life. Because uh, they're what was keeping them together isn't there anymore. I don't know if Luffy will be dead or d doesn't even matter. But I think they'll split up. And I could see theoretically, if that happened, theoretically, there could be pairings up between, uh, you know, people have long liked Robin and Zoro. That's one that's been, you know, Robin and Nami sometimes, Luffy and Nami. No, sometimes. Robin and Nami? Uh, did I say that? Whatever. I meant like Zoro and, and Robin and uh, Frankie and Robin. That's what I meant to say. And, and Frankie and Zoro and Usopp and Luffy, you know. <laughs> who, who knows? Who knows? Uh, Chopper, Chopper and Laboon. How about that? that that's, that's excellent. That, that'd be great. Uh, oh, he could go uh, guard point and turn to a big round boy just like Laboon. That'd be cool. And Laboon could smash into him against the red line. And then we'll just bounce. No problem. Easy. 
Oh, the fun we'll have. Okay, well, anyway, <laughs> enough of the shipping garbage. Uh, it's not about romance. Uh, everyone shut up. It's about bromance. And exactly. <laughs> here's the biggest bromance of all between uh, Law and Basil Hawkins. There, oh, there yes. Are. BDSM kind of kind of thing going yeah. on here. So we're back in the flower capital. Um, Law could not, like last we saw him, could not attack Hawkins because then he would kill his own crewmates, so clearly he lost, um, and is in chains, and but and he's being tortured for information, but yep. he's doing his, his famous uh, smirk, devilish smirk. He's Devil, like, it's devilish, all right. You're not going to get anything out of me, here. And uh, I guess they're not going to get anything out of him. I really like Hawkins' face there. He looks truly, like, that's the most emotion we've ever seen on Hawkins' face there. As he's uh, doing a look, look down. With yeah, that's a contempt. that's a pretty intense looking. It is. He's, it's, it's unusual for him. And then Law looks, you know, smug as heck. Oh, he's lost his hat. Oh no. Um, and they're gonna try to maybe that's, torture him. Get info out of him. That's the first torturous thing he did. He's got his hat and he started ripping it up. And <gasps> oh, the fluff. That's sad. Now, uh, so, so Law. Let's just, just quickly on this. So Law was fighting Hawkins, and he 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 lost. He fucking lost to Basil Hawkins. Hawkins, with, like, ten minutes of prep time, was easily able to, like, counter whatever the fuck... I, even I think I could have figured out ways for Law to beat Hawkins. Like, just do your cut that doesn't hurt them. That doesn't even hurt them. It's fine. Just cut them in half and keep doing it. Then just reassemble your friends later. What's even the danger? There's no problem with that. You have powers that allow you to do this kind of shit. So I don't really know why he was defeated. But clearly, this fucking former supernova was defeated by, or uh, I was going to say former warlord, was fucking beaten by Basil Hawkins. That's pretty impressive. Um, although I, it feels a little undeserved, because, uh, you know, like I was saying, it feels like there were ways that Hawkins could have, uh, Law could have gotten around it. However, do you think, like, is this part, because Law's plan was to break his boys out of jail. He is now in jail. I, so I love seeing Law get fucked up a little bit, because he, he very much needs to be humbled. But he's still smirking. So I have to ask, was getting caught part of your plan? Um, and, you know, uh, why does he wear the mask? Uh, and is he a big guy for you? And other such relevant questions. I think it's it wasn't part of a, any plan, but <laughs> he just likes not giving him what he wants, and that's why he's True. Uh, the uh, only thing is, I don't know what on earth he could be thinking is going to go well Oh, I here. think I know what he's thinking about doing. What the next step of his master plan might be. It's crashing this ark with no survivors! Bane, you know? Uh, do you know the memes? Okay, you know what? Doesn't matter. Let's not even address it. <laughs> I, uh, I, 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 I will never <laughs> respond to a meme, ever. <laughs> Good man. Okay, well, I mean, we'll see how this works out. I suspect I don't negotiate law... with memerists. <laughs> That's good. I do not associate with memers. Um, <laughs> that's that's the end of this. I, I suspect that Law, because Law is such a beloved fuckboy twink, you know, gay butt pussy uh, favorite character of everybody, I think that he will absolutely not talk, uh, even though that one being tortured, uh, it's very easy to get people to talk by torturing them um, in creative what, ways. But One Piece isn't if, that dark of a series, so if, this won't go um, anywhere. What if he's smirking here, but like, like, yeah. w like the ne the exact next panel mm -hmm. is Basil Haw Basil Hawkins gets a little feather and he tickles him under the <laughs> nose and he tickles him under the armpits and he, and he laughs so hard that he just spills the beans right there. Uh, and it's not gonna uh, he, happen. It's not he gonna happen. Completely fucks up. That's, One Piece just isn't that kind of a series. Like guys just with willpower can just resist torture and you know yeah, whatnot. I mean, uh, Law got shot a hundred thousand times. He got times. shot so many fuck. And his arm ripped off, and it wasn't even a big deal. It was fine. Uh, so fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, uh, even though, oh, you know what I do? If, if no, with the knowledge I have as a reader, knowing Law and his 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 hates and his fears, I would force feed him bread. We know he hates <laughs> bread, so I would feed him his despised bread. Oh no, until he... my keto! <laughs> Although he does like rice, so he's definitely not keto. Um, but he's he, a he, he eats keto rice. <laughs> Maybe he does. Maybe he does. All right. Well, that's it. We'll find out what happens next week. Should be a chapter next week, and uh, I can't wait. Good chapter. Things are moving along. Momonosuke relevant. Uh, the 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 jail things all wrapped up. Law humbled. Well, not quite humbled, but he should be soon. 
and it, Ashura Doji humbled, on our team. Definitely, uh, he's not humbled, but he's definitely mm. tumbled. In, uh, yes. G -g good. Good. All right. Well, we'll see you next week, everybody. Uh, have a good time. We'll see you soon. And let's keep these coming in a timely fashion. So uh, yes. you won't have to wait as long for them. See you soon. Come, yeah. Well, what, oh, oh, yeah. I almost forgot. Patreon.com slash the podcast pirates, of course. Yes, yes. Join the crew. Give us money. We're very much appreciative of that. And help us destroy those German bastards who are besmirching our name. And uh, the way that I've chosen for that to work is the more money you give us, the more uh, of their hit points get deducted uh, in, in this Yu-Gi-Oh game of epic stakes and proportions. That's how I'm seeing it now. Uh, help build our Hao Shoku Haki attack against them by giving us money. Nothing makes me more confident and feel more like an emperor than a vast cache of riches. So that's the new game we're playing. <laughs> and uh, a, va a vast cache of cash. Exactly. And uh, you'll also be a colored boy in the Discord, and you'll be a, a hero and a god amongst the lowly pleb whites. But you can just be a lowly white if you wish to be as well by clicking the link down below and joining the Pod D Discord, which is very active, talking about One Piece. It's a good time. And, uh, and that's it. And that's all there yep. is to it. So we'll see you next week. Have a good time. Read more One Piece. And be friends to everyone. Bye! Bye!